Do you get stuck trying to find ionic ratios when polyatomic ions are involved? My name is Leah Fish from LeahForSci.com, and in this video, I will show you how to find the ratio of atoms to form a neutral ionic compound when involving polyatomic ions. In part three of this series, we looked at how you find the ratio of ions to form an ionic compound, but we only looked at monoatomic ions. Now what happens when you try to form an ionic compound using polyatomic ions? Recall that the word polyatomic comes from poly, which means many, and atom, which is obviously atoms. This refers to a molecule rather than an atom, which gained or lost electrons and therefore has a charge. Let's look at hydronium, for example. H3O plus is actually a covalently bound molecule where we have an oxygen bound to three hydrogens and one lone pair of electrons. We put the entire molecule in brackets and then put a plus one outside to show that it's not one atom, but rather the entire molecule that has the charge. This, of course, discounts formal charge, which is a more advanced topic. But for now, recognize that the molecule actually has covalent bonds, the entire thing is charged, and this will interact with another charged atom and form an ionic bond. When we apply the crisscross method to ionic compounds, you treat the entire thing as if it's one unit. Let's quickly review the crisscross method. Let's say I have Ca2+, and I combine it with N3-. To find the number of ions that I need in this ionic compound, I take the 2 from the calcium charge and bring it down to the nitrogen, and I take the 3 from nitrogen's charge and bring it down to the calcium. This tells me that my ionic compound will be Ca3N2 to have a perfectly balanced neutral compound. You can form ionic compounds by combining a monoatomic and polyatomic ion. For example, if I combine H3O plus with Cl minus, I take the invisible one after the entire hydronium or H3O plus unit and bring it down to the chlorine. And then I take the invisible one after chloride and bring it down after the entire polyatomic ion. Since the numbers here are 1, we don't have to include a number, and this will give me a compound H3OCl. I can also form a compound using a polyatomic anion, for example, when I combine Na plus and SO4 to minus. For this example, I take the invisible one after sodium and bring it down to the sulfate, and the two of the sulfate down to the sodium. This gives me the compound Na2SO4. This is still an easy example. Where it gets tricky is in a situation that you need more than one polyatomic ion, and then the numbers can potentially get confusing. What happens when we try to form a compound using calcium 2 plus as the cation and nitrate, which is NO3 minus, as the anion. We start out with a crisscross method and bring the 2 down after the nitrate, then bring the invisible one down to the calcium. My product should be CaNO32, but if I write it out as I see it, CaNO32, I get confused. Where does that 2 come in and does it apply to the 3 or does it apply to the nitrate? And so when you write your polyatomic, to avoid confusion, place parentheses around the polyatomic ion only when you need more than one, and then place the number after the parentheses. This tells me that it's not just oxygen that gets multiplied by two, or rather everything within that set of parentheses that gets multiplied by two. If I try to count all the atoms here, I have to distribute the two to the nitrogen and to the oxygen. This means I have only one calcium, I have one times two nitrogen, which gives me two N, and I have two times three oxygen, and that's because I have three oxygens to begin with, and I multiply it by two when I use two ions, and that gives me two times three, which is six oxygens. Let's look at another tricky example. What happens when you combine Mg2 plus and PO4 three minus? We start out with a crisscross method, bring the 3 down to the magnesium, bring the 2 down after the phosphate. This gives me a product that has Mg3 and PO4 2. Since I have more than one of my polyatomic, I open a set of parentheses, draw the phosphate unit in the parentheses, then add the 2 outside to show that it applies to every atom in that polyatomic. If I break this down, 
Mg3PO42 means I have 3 magnesium, 2 phosphorus, and 8 oxygen. Be sure to join me in the next video where I show you how to reverse the crisscross so that you can identify the charges in an apparently neutral ionic compound. So what do you think? Do you feel confident enough to conquer these chemistry topics on your own? Thing is, this short video was just the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more to understand in chemistry which cannot be taught in just 5 to 10 minutes. But luckily, I have prepared an exclusive video training that I am offering as a free gift to you. Trust me, if you're serious about chemistry, you can't miss this one. To claim your free gift, visit layofersci.com slash chemistry gift. As a subscriber, you will receive exclusive email updates, including information regarding new videos, study tips, resources, and more. The URL again, layofersci.com slash chemistry gift, all one word. A quick favor, if you like this video, please click the thumbs up. If you know anyone else struggling with this information, share it with them too. They'll thank you for it. I'd love to hear from you, so please leave a comment below and let me know what you like most about this video and, of course, if you have any questions. You can also say hi on Facebook by visiting me at facebook.com slash Psst, still here. Don't forget to subscribe.